Um, if the camera angle looks a little odd and different, it's exclusive camera setup work by uh, Orphan Joker here because I have two kittens that decided to use me as a band. <laughs> I'm back. This is Mike Check 95 along with Orphan Joker, as I said. <laughs> And we are back with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check movie review of a movie that I meant to review probably a month ago. I've been hammering his ass. And he's been requesting time. it for a very long time. But uh, we reviewed The Equalizer, starring Denzel Washington, where he is just an old, retired man trying to live a normal life, and some bad shit starts to happen. He's like, Oh shit, here we go again. <laughs> and just starts kicking ass. As he said to the lady, when bad stuff happens, then you have the ability to do something about it. So you do. Before we get into the review, of course, if you enjoyed this review, be sure to like, share, comment. subscribe, comment, do all that good shit. Uh, all that stuff. Our social media is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the works. There's also a Discord link in the description box down below. Be sure to hit that link and join us through there. Comment on some of the ideas you like throughout the channel. Just chit chat with us. Have a normal conversation, you know what they do on, on the messenger stuff. And uh, also, if you have any ideas, you can also contact through us through there. Also, I guess a kitty update. Um, as you can see, uh, Max, Max is toast. Max is still he's toast in his getup. He's not wearing the tape anymore because we tried to do something else. He's got the bread back on and the camo suit. We also now started to bandage up his feet. His feet are perfectly fine. They are perfectly fine. It's just that keeps him from tearing up his poor little neck that started as a flea allergy issue from over a year ago. So hopefully by the end of this month, maybe next month, it'll be done. And the only reason why I'm stuck here holding both cats is, well, one, Fury decided to plop her butt down here and sleep for once. <laughs> and and I'm holding Max because if I let him go, I'm going to be afraid that he's going to tear one of his uh, foot bandages off. Now, moving on to the review. The numbers of The Equalizer. Critics rate this film a 6 out of 10, while audiences rate this film a 7.6 out of 10. The budget of this film was between 55 to 73 million dollars. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Max is said no. Max is said no. Orphan Joker's madness scared the kitties. It's okay, Max. We have the review paper there. You almost got to see it, but it was too dark for you to read it, so okay. you're just going to have to deal with the black coat. And they boxed off his back $192.3 million. So, yeah, they did. They did box off this a lot. Um, some comments that I decided to write down during this film. This is a loosely based reboot based off of the old TV show of the same name. I didn't really catch... Oh, it, it was? Yeah, I didn't really catch the year the TV show came out, but I'm going to have to have Edit Mike look that up, so... Here's the year the TV show came out. There are two sequels. One already came out back in there are 20... sequels? One already came out back in 2018, and there's a third planned sequel that's coming out next year in 2023. Seriously? Is that yes. what we're watching it now? I guess I only had this one because I didn't see the second one. I didn't even know there was going to be a third one. I didn't know there was a second one. And uh, the other thing, I guess I'll write down the comments because I was, I was a little uh, kind of confused on... Um, Robert's background, so I wasn't 100% sure what he used to be. Uh, he is a former U.S. Marine turned DIA intelligence officer. So I know he used to work for like the military or whatever, but that's close enough. Denzel Washington isn't old in this movie, but he made himself look old. Yes. That was pretty. Yes. Oh! There we go. Had to readjust him. Um, isn't there a little story behind this movie that you have? And the reason why you kept requesting for this film? Would you like to go into that story, or is that confidential? It's, it's not. This movie... <laughs> that story is too damn long, because it connects to another story. Orphan Joker's most interesting let-down days of his life. <laughs> if you've ever found yourself in a hotel room, eating tacos, you nope. like, waiting for your best friend's lady friend to come over so he can kick you out of his hotel room, and the only joy that you have is knowing that the shoe place did not have tennis shoes, but you were looking for it. And Denzel Washington keeps popping on and off the TV, blowing the fuck out of some people. And all you know is you missed the first five minutes, keeps cutting out, and you don't want to drive your ass the hour and a half home. But you got to, because you ain't sleeping in that hotel room with your best friend and his lady friend at night. So, you drive your ass home. And I was like, you know what, I want to fucking watch this movie. And Mike says, 
I'm gonna watch this movie, and I'm like, I want to watch it. I want to watch it. I want to watch it. When are we gonna watch it? When are we gonna watch it? <laughs> we're about to watch it tomorrow. <laughs> Watching it today. The last time I saw this film was probably right after it came out on DVD, and I thought it was half the length of what it is. I thought it was a lot shorter. I guess we can go into some pros and cons. I kind of want to go over the cons because I didn't really see too much to really complain about. No cons. Uh, um, this con is not really something that I really was complaining about. It's more so kind of like a general audience kind of thing. It won't really affect the score for me, but the, basically if you've seen the old TV show, The Equalizer, and try to compare it to the movie, there's probably going to be some people out there that don't really like the movie because they're no fan of the old Equalizer uh, TV show and whatnot. Like, that was one that I can kind of like think of like, for a con in general because it's like comparing like book to movie or game to movie. Did he not do show. cool stuff in the other in the TV show? I don't know. I, I that's why I kind of wrote it down as like a general fact because I don't exactly remember or actually have seen the original TV show. I need to like do some uh, research on it, but it's just. It's, it's a con to put on the con table, but it's not a con that I would say is bad for me. It's kind of like a general, if you don't like remakes, this might be one you may not like. I didn't write it down, but I kind of forgot that, um, I forget her actual name in the movie, but the actress Chloe, I, I did it, I, I think I did it when I first saw it, but I kind of forgot that she was in this film about halfway through. And then it kind of made me realize, oh wait, she doesn't really play a huge role in the movie. She just plays, like, the reason why he is doing this mission. But it's not like it's a bad thing, because, like, you want to focus more on, like, what he's doing, why he's doing it, his history. And he's helping other people, too. Yes. Like, you want to focus more on him. And also, like, I just remembered that um, the guy who plays Hopper in Stranger Things, I forgot he was in the movie after he ejected from the film. <laughs> Like, you see all these actors you've seen in other movies and everything, and once their part in the movie's done, or they're off screen for a long time, they come back in, you kind of just forget they're there because you're so, like, absorbed into what um, Denzel Washington's doing. This is one of those movies, because I have this thing when it comes to taking notes when it comes to movies. Mm -hmm. Like, usually I'm usually in a normal review, I'm taking, if it's kind of like back and forth with, like, pros and cons, I'm taking notes throughout the film and everything. When I'm watching a movie and I stop taking notes, and I've explained this in previous reviews, I'm either thoroughly enjoyed in the film and trying to like actually see what's going on or the movie absolutely fucking sucks and I, want to, I just want to stop because I've already made my point. This kind of happened with this or this movie too because like I wrote my first like one, two, like three like pros in this film picks up like six lines and it like pretty much describes everything that happens in the film for that particular point and I'm like I've already covered that and I had, I had a hard time finding a cop in the film. My cons come in the uh, not Home Depot scenes. Um, the rest of the movie is super great, super awesome. Get to the Home Depot scenes, a couple of things confused me, I didn't get. So, he's super cool, super awesome, does all these crazy things, okay, gets to this place, beats up these couple bad guys. New bad guys come in, okay, set in the scene. He stabbed these dudes in like this. Gotham Knight, as Mike says, like epic Arkham Knight style. Yeah, Arkham Knight <laughs> slashing shit. It's so fantastic. Then he gets lit the fuck up by this dude. He gets shot like about two or three times. He gets shot like once, 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 once or twice time. And he does a super cool like heat up a torch thing and, and sear himself. Oh, he cauterizes the wound with the yeah. heated with the heated door yeah. up. And then he's doing really really good, going around all sneaky and creepy and like, getting up all on people, and then fights this big dude with glass and shit. And he falls down. He's like, oh, I can't get up. And then they do the movie trope that they always do in the movie trope. And I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming an hour before. As soon as uh, the security kid leaves, I was like, I know that he's coming back to help him. At some point, <laughs> it's gonna fucking happen. So I was pissed. Why? Because after that moment, they were following a blood trail. And he didn't get shot again. So where was he bleeding from? Probably a couple cuts from the glass in the ears. That actually makes sense. Never mind. Annex that he was bleeding from his hand with the glass. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I even said that in a moment. 
You even said that like at the, the three days later scene when he was at Moscow. Like, oh, his hand that stuff from that fight scene with that guy in the mirror. <laughs> he's kind of like trying to play a character that like, I mean, he's intense, he's serious, he's pretty much straightforward. What was, no it bullshit. Was, it was a security kid. Former like um, CIA agent or, or DIA or whatever, Marine. And like when he's talking to like his friends and coworkers and everything, like he tries to portray the character that he is trying to be like the, the nice caregiving like mm-hmm. like old man that like doesn't like show this kind of violence thing so it probably bothers him that he has to do these certain things to protect his friend and family because he's kept it a secret for so so long but my thing is like nobody's helped him out i saw like the lady getting into information yeah all by himself and so I realized that the kid was like, what the frick is going on with like, the whole shooting the guy scene with a nail gun. But I felt like having him help him didn't add much to the story outside. Now there's somebody to flip the breaker. <laughs> like for him to flip the breaker on and off or be bait or something. It just, it felt weird that he was doing it all by himself at this point. They do it and the kids are doing like, holy frick, like had an emotion like this guy did it all by himself. But they put the kid up in, in there, and then he didn't even say hi to the kid afterwards. He says hi to the other, the little girl. And I was like, what? I mean, it was probably like... I, they should have had something there. Oh, first pro, before he gets pro out. I love movies where it's like, old guy, can't do nothing. Superhero, even though they were like, all like, oh, he's super cool when he catches the ball over here. You can, they give you little hints of his like ability to do stuff, but I love the whole people doing stuff in clothes like my grandpa wears. He's like having a problem screwing a screwdriver and then like murder somebody over here at the same time. It's like, oh, go grandpa, you kick his butt. You See, that, that's, 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 kind of, right. that's kind of ties in with mine because like, it's like he's trying to live a normal life, helping others, carefree, pretty much carefree, retired life, but he's also dealing with like the troubled past from his previous secret job, mm-hmm. trying to move on from that, trying to forget about all that and just... And like he was explaining to the one uh, girl when he went to their house to get the information, like, he's trying to live a normal life and forget about everything, but you know, all it takes is one random stranger to see something happen, something bad happen to him for him just to go, he's got to do something. He takes the hammer out of the store, beats him up, he's back. <laughs> yes. They give you the information the same time the character shares the information. Mm-hmm. You see the information. There's no secret special bullshittery way of sharing information and the information comes slowly where you can absorb it and it makes total sense and and I don't care where the fuck his background is I don't need to know that all what I do know he got the goods <laughs> and he got it from somewhere and nobody want to mess with him and the like tie in with the whole like him dealing with all those troubles and everything and mm-hmm. having to take uh, an action on what's going on he's like because of his previous job he's always aware of what's going on around him he's always taking the extra precautions. As you see, he's always timing himself with his stopwatch and everything. And he's that's, been doing that. That's old repetition from like he knew his what? previous job. Like, he's always knowing, he always has to know what's going on. Before the dude even got to the top, like, nobody comes up to his house that day, right? But he knew exactly, like, how long it took somebody to come from his front steps up to the top, even though nobody ever did it before. I bet he had his mailman do it just so he could, like, test how long it takes to get to the top. <laughs> the other thing I want to kind of touch base on even though there wasn't really that much there. Um, his relationship with the, the young girl played by Chloe that he met at the diner and like their chemistry that they had on screen. I, I actually liked their chemistry on screen mm-hmm. and how they, it was good. They did uh, very, uh, very well together and like you could see like they were just kind of like in passing friends at first at the diner for a very long time and then it turned into like oh you're actually a really good friend that can help me out. The videography in here is fantastic. The way they slow things down and show from his perspective, but not like the Resident Evil rock. I have super cool person vision. Flashback to all those movies. That's all freaking messed up. No, it's great. Like his heartbeat slows down. He goes back into code. When you first see him move the little glass skulls, you're like, you like to get his ass handed to him. You're laughing almost as much as the guys are there. Because you don't know nothing. He's some grandpa. You know, he cuts boards for a living. You know, you don't see him working out. He goes and eats food at one o'clock in the morning. Talk of kind of like that scene and everything, because this, oh. this is where that note came from. How like how like the action was played out throughout the movie, and how there was even like not even just tense action scenes, but also just mm-hmm. scenes that were just tense and like were just conversation, like mm-hmm. the the, uh, the intensity and like 
intenseness of this film when it came to those certain yeah. scenes were nailed perfectly. And I felt like it really flowed very well with the majority of the other films that were like not so tense. It was just him like in a normal yeah. conversation day. It, and they did lighting really great. Like all the intense stuff happens at night or in the dark. Like overall, like besides like maybe like the last couple minutes, like after the Hallmark scene and then his last scene with Chloe. Like overall, I think the pacing of this film was like nine times out of ten, like pretty much perfect. Oh yeah, just those those last two little scenes that I mentioned there seemed a little like how I ended and then transferred over to Moscow and then transferred over to and then conversation with Chloe. Like that, it, that that was the only thing where I was kind of like, oh, it looks like they kind of rushed that a little bit. Yeah, he got hit a couple times. He got shot here and he got like like cut here or whatever. But this film, they do a good job. Of him they made the they world. made him look like he was pretty much untouchable in this movie. Yeah, like overall. But yeah. when he was touched, he knew how to deal with it. And it's just like I rarely ever see films like this where the protagonist like barely gets like nicked by anything, and he's just pretty much untouchable. And that's one of my favorite smart. things about this film. Kill. And my last pro is, I'm pretty sure this movie, I don't think his career was in down in the dumps at the time, but this film revitalized Denzel Washington's career. Because there's a lot of people out there I know that love these movies. <laughs> Ignore the ratings here and whatnot, how they're kind of like mediocre to average. I know a lot of people that love The Equalizer and love the second one because they say that this film, or films, rejuvenated his career and made him like holy shit you don't fuck with him again. Do you have any science time? Do 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 science time for Josh. Yes fucking science in this movie. Okay yes hot honey very good for boo boos. Okay honey's very good for boo boos number one um but hot honey super good number one good for boo boos hot stuff Really good for bullet wounds or any shots. All of the shots that he had seemed to be clean, mm -hmm. clean through. His methods of doing stuff, excellent, excellent. Work with everything. Working with the camera systems. Uh, working with explosions. The way the explosions exploded. How it just wasn't all at the same time that it slowly goes down, which is how it works. It His use of gas, not just a uh, massive map gas, but the way he sets up traps, all of these things, they make sense. There wasn't a single thing he did. I was like, you can't do that. Outside of the same thing they put in every fucking movie, which is a silencer. You can't shoot a silencer on any gun unless it's 22 long. It's the biggest bullet you can have, and it actually be psh, quiet. It's also the Russian mafia, so we yes. probably don't give two shits. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, other than what would be normal ass gun bullshits, it makes total sense. It was great. I don't know who's in charge of the science over here, but they did it. There wasn't no malarkey. There wasn't no ridiculous. Although, he did, he did have the trope of cool guys don't look at explosions. Yes. That's required. <laughs> if you look back, it means you misplanned. Okay, final thoughts. Um, this film, it again, I've only seen this film twice, and I really enjoy it a lot. Like it's, it, it reminds me a lot of like the, the James Bond films, but it's totally on a different level and everything mm -hmm. because it, it's like a spy espionage, like military, with like, like, take down Gross. everything. I, I think the reason why I haven't seen this film too much is that like it's. It's a good movie. Okay, I early did. I, I, I will. I will say this is a good movie. I will notice. I will notify and notice that this film is a good movie. But I feel like it's a movie that, if it's one of those films where like I can probably only watch it like a couple times, like here and there, and mm -hmm. I can get burnt out in this film very easily, which is not a bad thing because it's like a. It's not. It's not a flash in the pan kind of movie. It's a. It's a movie that'd be like okay, I can mm -hmm. watch this again. After a while, I think a flavor of the month is kind of the best way to explain it without making it sound horrible. It's a good movie. Go watch it. If I had some time to watch the sequel, and then wait another year to watch the third. <laughs> this is the magical sheet. On the magical sheet, it has Orphan Chokers. How I feel about the movie. Yes. The problem is an eight is great. Nine is when to watch it again. Ten is when to watch it again right now. And an eleven is a plus one. Spoiler: This is not an eleven. But only because the final last scene, sitting in the parlor, opens his laptop, 
There's different ways to help people. Basically, it becomes a shootable, killable Deadpool. At that moment, I remembered what has been going on through this whole damn room from the start. It starts off with old man in his house by himself, can't sleep. And that's where it ends. Old man by himself, sitting in front of a laptop in his coffee shop. And as much as it crazy dude, killing people, blowing things up, saving people, doing good, you know, Batman and Robin, Robin Hood, all that good shit. Taking down the city cops, you know, like Batman. All that good stuff. I forgot there was a story. And as the story goes, sad man had to leave his wife to get out of whatever system he was in. His wife dies. But the whole reason he has a conversation with the girl long before you know that girl's even in trouble. You learn about this guy. And his life is great. He gets to help people. But his life also sucks. He can't sleep. He's reading books so he can have a conversation with a wife who you find out later has been dead. He's helping people, but there's something missing. And he made a promise that to his wife, who's now dead, that he would never do this again. And because this tattooed stupid head, he showed up at his doorstep waving around a picture of a girl that he thought was going to be okay who ended up dying. And he's like, I'm up. Uh, you flipped the switch. You killed an innocent girl that was only in trouble that got killed because of me. When you fight me, I'm going to kill you. That flipped the switch, and that was what he didn't want to do. But because he did that, he now has a part of himself that he actually needed that he let go. And that was his ability to help people by beating his chin. <laughs> and so at the end, you see this man who's still old. Still a widow, you know, still a badass, and still want to care and help people. But he's doing it in a way in which does not require him to be sad and lonely, and eating pie, reading dead books by himself. And so he himself grows, even though he really doesn't do anything outside of become who he already was. He learned that he can be, you know, the baddest cat in town. And he doesn't have to work at home mark. And so that last scene when he's sitting there, he's on his laptop. And he smiles. And he's not helping people because he feels bad. You know. He's still gonna help people. He's still gonna hold the door for old ladies trying to get the cat. He's still gonna encourage people, you know, to eat right. And so I'm gonna break code because I do not want to watch this again. I'm gonna give this 9.5. Because, as much as I do not want to watch this again, it is, it is really hard. Because if I do not want to watch it again, I don't read it anymore. But I'm going to give it a ceremonial 9.5. And that is a, if you haven't watched this, you should watch this. That's kind of where I was kind of getting from my explanation of like a film that I would want to watch every once in a while. Like... You don't want to watch it again because it's I'll watch like, it with people like who haven't watched it. You you won't randomly pop it in like at home and just be like, okay, I'm gonna go watch it by myself. I would watch this movie by myself because this could be a film like if you watch it too many times, you'll start to notice more bad nit, nit, stuff. nitpicky things. And like, I'm not saying that this is gonna happen in this film. I just know that there's films I've seen in the past, time and time and time and time and time again, and those nitpicks mm -hmm. build up. Over when I reviewed, for, first reviewed this film years ago, either it was off of notes or camera or whatever, I think I did give it like a 7.5 or 7.7 .7 when it first came out. I'm assuming it's probably because, like, when it came to, like, watching movies, I was still fresh into, like, doing movie reviews and everything. You didn't want to give things like 12s. And, well, like, I was still, like, not a, I would say, a better movie reviewer than I am now because I have gotten a lot better you over killed the killed the dude in the rain, and it was raining inside the building. Um... For my final rating now, I I'm not gonna go super high like yours, but I'm probably, okay. I'm probably not gonna go anything below of the audience score, and I'm probably gonna set this at like a I want to say like a, a 8.2, and as that some like you might think that might be a little low, 
I think it's just like the tiny little things of like forgetting that certain characters were in the film until you remember later on. Oh wait, they were in this film, and it's not like huge bits here and there. Way early. And I feel like that this could be a film. It's an eight point two now, but this could be a film that could get better if we want. If I were to watch the second one and the third one, because like say like I watch this film and it's the eight point two I have now, and I watch the second one and it's worse than this one then this film would probably stay as an 8.2 and everything because usually sequels help like prequels get better ratings if the, uh, they flow together like pacing wise and, and storyline structure. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to see the scene of him beating the shit out of a guy with the hammer. Well, I and thought they the, did, the hammer was connected and then like, there ain't nothing left. What the fuck was that? I wanted to, to see that scene so much. beat the guy up just because he could. I think that's all the time we have for the bad buttons. For this review, um, when I get off the camera, I'm going to double check this bandage on his foot so I can rebandage it, you little butthole. Um, this is my check 95, along with Orphan Joker, and we are signing out of this equalized movie review.